Hello, everyone. Please excuse the glasses. This is how I always look in the real world. No one ever sees me without the protective lenses. That is because I cannot have light upon my eyes. Within the house, I have very special lights that I have scoped or gradiated so that my lights are within a special range for my eyes. The light I use for recording is the exception, so I'm always adjusting it for my eyes. Unfortunately, it hurts too much this week. Our lesson today is titled, The Good Steward. For our Gospel of Luke, it talks about the steward, but we don't necessarily think he's a good steward, do we? But we've got a number of morals for this story. In the biblical time, it was the custom of the agent to act on behalf of their masters, and the agents commonly setting a usurious rate of lending between themselves, with the agent keeping the profit. Rates of 20% a month were not uncommon not unlike the payday loans now. Illegal under usury laws in most states, as they are equal to an annual interest rate of over 354%. The dishonesty of the steward consisted in the squandering of his master's property and not in any subsequent graft. The master commends the dishonest steward who has forgone his own usurious commission on the business transactions by having the debtors write new notes that reflected only the real amount owed the master, in other words, minus the steward's profit. The dishonest steward acts in this way in order to ingratiate himself with the debtors because he knows he is being dismissed from his disposition. The parable then teaches the prudent use of one's material goods in light of an imminent crisis. Moral number one. For the children of this world are more prudent in dealing with their own generation than are the children of light. I tell you, make friends for yourselves with dishonest wealth, so that when it fails, you will be welcomed into internal, eternal dwellings. This conclusion recommends the prudent use of one's wealth in light of a coming end of an age after the manner of the children of this world, represented in the parable by the dishonest steward. Dishonest wealth is literally translated as mammon of iniquity and means that it is the wealth itself that leads one toward dishonesty. And the eternal dwellings, of course, are heaven. The second conclusion or moral from the scripture, the person who is trustworthy in very small matters is also trustworthy in great ones. The person who is dishonest in very small matters is also dishonest in great ones. This conclusion recommends constant fidelity to those in positions of responsibility. In other words, don't give your stuff to someone to take care of 
without looking over their shoulder every now and then. Conclusion number three. From the, from the gospel yesterday, no servant can serve two masters. He will either hate one and love the other, or be devoted to one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. This conclusion is a general statement about the incombat incompatibility of serving God and being a slave to riches. To be dependent upon wealth is opposed to the teachings of Jesus, who counseled complete dependence on the Father as one of the characteristics of the Christian disciple. God and mammon, with mammon here used as if it were itself a God. Jesus notes that wealth has its place to be used to assist those less well off, to feed, clothe, house, and care for the poor. But to be rich for the sake of being rich is a sin. And to pretend to be a preacher while living in the most ostentatious, luxurious wealth while others are dying in poverty for one doesn't live in poverty. One merely exists in poverty, then one dies. This is the most grievous sin against God and against your fellow human. I am not going to say the list, but only going to name the worst offenders, so you too can pray that they be struck down. Joel Austin, Kenneth Copeland, Jesse Duplantis, and Crefo Dollar. May their abundance of ego and failure of anything like a religion come to the notice of the IRS so that they may have to pay the taxes upon their illegal wealth, their immoral wealth, for they are not a church. They are none of them a religion. May they have to be pay, may they be forced to pay in both this world and the next. If it please the Lord. Peace be with you.